Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to talk about all things biogas plants. Now I have to say, the biogas plants have changed a fair bit, but less than players may be thinking between Farm Sim 19 and Farm Sim 17. They've been properly moved over into the production aspect, and if you understand production, then you're going to understand the biogas plants because inputs go in and we get paid out per hour for product generated. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I think has confused some players, it confused me initially, is the ability to generate now power from the biogas plant, which then we kind of associated with the charging station and electric vehicles, and the ability to make methane which we kind of attributed to the methane pump and methane powered vehicles. But I have to say they are independent of each other. And we're going to see that here in a minute. At least they appear to be independent from each other. And that is because the biogas plants, while they produce methane and while they produce energy, as well as digestate, they will automatically sell the energy and the methane every hour. You don't have an option on changing that to store. So if we come up here and we activate the trigger here for the small biogas plant that does 99 kilowatt hours, you'll see its output is only digestate. But we can see from the recipe that it produces energy and methane gas, but it only has an output that we can change, store, sell, or distribute for digestate. And that is basically it will auto sell power and it will auto sell methane without our ability to store it. So we can't store power, we can't store methane. So these placeable power charging stations and the placeable methane pumps do not appear to be tied in any way with the biogas plants in that we cannot store it and therefore we cannot make use of the own, our own methane or our own energy that is produced. It's a little bit of a, in my opinion, a little bit of a downside, a little bit of a disappointment because I think some players were hoping that they could produce methane and then maybe at some point through mods or further DLC, there would be a whole fleet of methane powered vehicles that you could have. And then you could basically fuel your whole farm off of methane that you're producing from the biogas plant. Now let's take a look at these things in a shop. So we go to production, factories, and then we have three biogas plants that we can place. We have here the 99 kilowatt hour biogas plant for 300. $435,000. You'll see its input is cut sugar beets, slurry, manure, and silage. And as I said, it outputs digestate, methane, and power, of which methane and power are automatically sold. Here we have the next biogas plant, the 250 kilowatt hour product. Has the same inputs, the same outputs, just works a bit more quickly and then we have the last one the 500 kilowatt hour biogas plant it's a bit long has the same inputs same outputs but of course it produces or generates power faster because it produces product faster now let's fly over real fast to the in-game biogas plant, which is right here. It is significantly bigger than even the placeable biogas plant. You can see it has two digesters, two large three-sided silage bunkers. We're not going to talk today about how to make silage. That's going to be for another day. We're just talking about how these biogas plants operate from a functional standpoint. So this one is going to produce more digestate, more power, 
and more methane gas than even the big 500 kilowatt placeable version that we have over here across from the shop. So let's talk about how these all work. What are the triggers? Where are the triggers and such? So on the small one, we have a dump station here for slurry. We have our dump station at the digester for our silage, manure, and cut sugar beets. And then we have our fill station for digestate. Moving on to the slightly bigger version, we have our digester for our solid products, manure, slurry, and not sorry, manure, silage, and cut beets. We have our dump station for the cut beets. We have our fill pipe for the digestate and then our interactive trigger right there. And then moving over to the big boy. We'll just go over here to the left. We have a fill station for digestate. In fact, we have two such fill stations for digestate, a dump station for slurry, and then our digester for our more solid products, silage, manure, and cut beets. Now, if we jump over to the biogas plant, we have two places that we can dump our solid products, cut sugar beets, silage, or manure on either side. And in fact, probably the best way to do this is you can dump right here with a trailer or you could put it in if you had a bucket on either side we have our interactive trigger over here we have our fill trigger to pull digestate out of the biogas plant and around the corner we have our dump station for slurry Now, I had placed the methane pump and the energy pump over here because I wanted to see some things. First, if we get into the energy or the uh, yeah, our electric telehandler, we hit R to refuel. We are recharging. You'll see the charging bar down there is increasing ever so slowly. And we're recharging at no cost to us at least at a very, very minimal cost, if there is a cost to us. Now, as far as our methane, if we hit R, you'll see that we are being charged for methane, and our tractor fill is going up. So I just want to stop that, because I now want to go and, well, let's go start producing energy but before that let's look at all the various recipes so the small biogas plant this is a little confusing but i think it's going to demonstrate that you definitely get more bang for your buck for very specific inputs silage 840 liters co in 756 units of power are generated one unit of methane is generated and 252 units of digestate is generated from those 840 units of silage cycles per hour. So I'm taking that to mean that it's going to process 840 units of silage per hour. Slurry. 200 units of slurry is going to make 180 units of power, one methane and 60 digestate. So we get a lot more methane out of slurry per liter, it seems. Manure, 200 units of manure makes 180 units of power, one methane and 60 digestate. And then cut sugar beets makes 100 units of cut sugar beets, makes 90 units of power, one methane and 30 digestate for the small plant. For the medium plant, 2120 in silage makes 1909 in power, one methane and 636 digestates. 
505 units of slurry makes 455 in power, one methane and 152 in digestate. The same ratios for manure. And then cut sugar beets, 253 makes 227 plus one methane plus 76 digestates. The large placeable biogas plant, 4,243 units of silage makes 3,819 units of power, five methane units, and 1,273 units of digestate. Slurry and manure are the same, 1,010 units of manure or slurry, 909 units of power, five units of methane, and 303 units of digestate. And cut sugar beets, half of that basically, 505 units of cut sugar beets, makes 455 in power, five units of methane in 152 liters of digestate. Now let's go buy the big biogas plant and see what its recipes are. So unlike Farm Sim 19, where you would buy the biogas plant from the lands menu, you can't buy the biogas plant from the lands menu by just clicking on it. it doesn't work. In order to buy it, you have to actually come over here just like production to the trigger, buy it for one and a half million dollars here on Elm Creek. And now that we have done that, we can come to our production and we can see now that we have a one megawatt biogas plant. So double the output of 500 gigawatt. So we can expect double the input processing, right? 8,484 units of silage, interesting enough, still only makes five units of methane per cycle, 7,636 units of, si of power, and 2,545 units of digestate, 2,020 units of slurry or manure goes in, 1,818 units of power, five units of methane, and 606 liters of digestate, and 1,010 units of cut sugar beets, makes 909 units of power, five units of methane, and 303 units of digestate. So I know someone is going to go through the bother and try to calculate out and basically establish which is the best input for the bang for your output. I'm not going to do that. I am most concerned with how these buildings operate. What is the absolute best thing to put into them for a specific type of output? That is not my area of focus. So with that, Let's talk about putting product in these. And I've got all types of product lined up. Slurry. As I said, we're going to come over here to the dump station. We're going to put in slurry. By overloading slurry. Just like that. And we see from the production menu. That slurry is going up. And therefore slurry is going to start producing output. We also have a trailer load of cut sugar beets. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, how do I make cut sugar beets? Well, we're gonna answer that here in a moment. Now I wanna see if, I know we can unload with a trailer at the in-map biogas plant. I wanna see if we get a unload trigger here or if we're gonna have to scoop it in. side back okay it looks like we might have to scoop in a product at least for the small unit I didn't get the unload trigger there for cut sugar beets it's like the same may hold true with uh, 
Respect to the medium sized unit. And possibly the large unit. Why did I hit something there? Mister? All right, well, let me run over to the big bog ass point and I'll show you. So you'll see coming up here to the in-game biogas plant, or the in-map biogas plant. We do get a overloading icon come up. So let's just go ahead and overload our cut beats here. And then we'll go talk about how we make cut sugar beets. It's a bit of an involved process, but it seems like cut sugar beets might be the best bang for your buck. I don't know. Someone's going to do the math. Someone's going to put in the comments. Uh, you should only ever put X in the biogas plant because it produces far more outputs based on the quantity of inputs. And that's fine. That's fine if you want to put that. It's fine if you want to break it all down. Like I've said, that's not necessarily my focus. My focus isn't how to be the absolute most efficient at using things in FarmSim. My focus is understanding and hopefully demonstrating the functional use of things. So here we have a load of beets. And I'm gonna unload some beets. I'm not gonna unload the whole trailer. That would just be a little crazy. I'm going to load some beets. So that's about 4,000 liters of beets. The only way that I have found to make cut sugar beets is to use a Flegel front loader bucket. A special Flegel front loader bucket. I was personally hoping that there would be a placeable production facility that would allow me to place beets in it and I would get a whole heap load of bulk cut beets out of it but that is not the case so we need to use this special flegal bucket which I will show you in the shop right now we go to tools front loader tools the ruby 2000 this tool can cut sugar beets to feed them to your biogas plant. Right here. That is the only way I have found to cut beets. And we really need to have a weight on the back. So the way this works, F1 menu, with the bucket selected, we're going to position this. And then we're going to hit B. Like so. See the fill plane on the biogas plant going up. Let me clean up my mess that I made here. Oh, shoot. Turn off the bucket when you go to get to your next scoop because apparently it keeps running. So let's demonstrate that again. I like how we do have hose hookups to our bucket. So I'm going to run a scoop by scoop. Pick up our bucket of sugar beets. Position it over and then turn it on by having the bucket selected. And you'll see the fill plane is going up on the digester here. Looks like I may have filled it. Let's look at the small biogas plant. 
Yep, cut sugar beets. It only holds 3,600 units of our liters of cut sugar beets. And now it is full. So that is how you make cut sugar beets. It's a bit of a process for sure. Now I also have a trailer over here of silage. And from what we just learned, I do not think I'm gonna be able to dump silage here on the ground. I'm gonna to have to put it inside the bucket. I just wanted to validate that. I did all of my pre-video testing on the on the in-game biogas plant, mind you. But the process is the same. There we go. In fact, I wasn't I wasn't gonna show you belts today. I was gonna do belts in a different video, but you know what? Since we have to put product in the hopper, let me go get you some belts and I'll show you how to use belts to make your job a whole lot easier. So real quick, now we have ourselves some belts and we're gonna find those in the belts category of the shop. Right now we have an S710. This belt is used to pick up things from the ground. We have the SL8020 Quantum. This belt is used to obviously transport product and can be raised and lowered. And then just to test, as I know someone's gonna ask, can you use the Meridian Auger belt? Well, we'll find out. Because we've got one of those set up also. And if you haven't familiar with belts, you can enter belts, you turn them on, you unfold it, and then you drive it around like so. We're gonna position this belt so it unloads into this belt. And then it will then unload into our hopper. So if you don't want to deal with scooping silage into the digester, then you can just do it this way. You have to force unload. Then we'll enter the belt, turn it on. I didn't see it. Take product and or in silage. We now have 603 liters of silage. So when using these, you really need to go in here and set the setting where is it automatic engine start off that way it will continue to run even if you're not in it there we go and i like i like let me go back here because what i do like about this now is these hoppers basically have a fill plane now. And then as we use production, or as we produce, that will go down. Let's see if this Meridian Auger, I haven't tested it, let's see if this Meridian Auger will move silage.
I think it will. All right. And look at that, everybody. Look at that. So there you go. Meridian augers can move silage. Quite frankly, that's probably easier than setting up belts. Because we could also add our possibly our cut sugar beets that way. And now I also have a load of manure. The final input that our biogas plants accept. We'll just drive past these triggers just to validate they don't let us dump manure in them. We could obviously use those belts again if we wanted. No dump station for manure. That's for slurry. That's to pull digestate out. All right, so while we're here, we'll just dump our manure in our meridian bin, our meridian auger. Maybe it doesn't take manure. <laughs> that does. Who goes in? And there you go. That is pretty neat. All right, so let's take a look. So we now have manure in. We have silage in. You can see that these accept different values depending on the inputs. We're going to go in here and we're going to activate manure and that. We're going to activate silage in that one. We're going to activate flurry. And cut sugar beets in that one. And cut sugar beets is automatically activated for our built in biogas plant. So the built in biogas plant, once you put product in it, it just kicks off and starts running. The placeables you have to explicitly activate. I want to see if my little, little flame thing over here, I want to see if it's spewing flame no okay so now let's fast forward until just before 10 a.m let these guys run a little bit okay that's good enough 957 let's go back and look at our production so we've made some digestate processing down our cut sugar beets We've got some digestate there. We've got digestate in the 250 kilowatt unit, and we've got digestate in our 500 kilowatt unit. So that means that we are making methane. We're making energy. We're also making digestate. I want to see, can I fill my methane tractor now at no cost? I'm producing methane. Is it going to charge me? Yes, it's charging me. So, in my opinion, these pumps are just standalone pumps. They are not tied. They don't appear to be tied in any way to this production. Okay? In fact, if we go to build mode, 
And we got a tools. That's where we get them from. We can put one. Nope, oh, can't put it there. Let's put it right here. Yeah, okay. Let's put this one right here. Okay. If they were to be associated now, they would be an associated, right? That one's full. That one's full too. Well, we'll, we'll empty it. Through the, through the magic of television, I'm going to empty it when I get over there. Now let's go ahead and see what happens when we try to refuel our methane. We are immediately charged money as we are refueling our methane. That's what I thought. They're just pumps. They're not they're not tied in any way, shape, or form, apparently, to these biogas plants. Now before time passes, let's go to our finances screen. And I want to show you that we have. No property income. We have no harvest income. No biogas plant income. And no sold products income. Okay. I'm also going to take, and we're going to take the big biogas plant. And we're going to change digestate from storing to selling. The same with this one. We're going to change and change it from storing to selling. Okay. Now let's go ahead and move on. Take a look at our money. The important things are 87493. 87493. It is now nine three zero seven five. So we have earned money at the top of the hour. Let's take a look at our finances screen. Finance. We now have 130 production costs. So we've spent some money to produce. We have $92 worth of sold products. We have $5,616 worth of harvest income. And interesting enough, we have no biogas plant income. None whatsoever. So we have sold products and harvest income. What is that money from? Well, the money is from the power generated, the methane generated, and the digestate generated. You'll see that we are now down to 20 units of digestate in this big plant. We had over a thousand units earlier. The big biogas plant, we had 200 and some. We're down to four. But we still have digestate in our small and medium biogas plants. And the reason is because I wanted to pull some out just to demonstrate. with our handy dandy tanker over here and that is pretty much it so the synopsis is you have to use a bucket or a belt to place product into the placeable bga hoppers or digesters you can use a trailer apparently to put product into the base map biogas plant at least here on elm creek i suspect it would transfer over to the french map and the alps map you can place manure slurry silage or cut sugar beets into the biogas plant to do sugar beets you have to cut sugar beets you have to use the flegal bucket to scoop up sugar beets and then turn it on when over the hopper 
the biogas plants will produce energy and methane and it will automatically sell those you have no settings that you can specify it will automatically sell those at the top of every hour and you can set your digestate just like any other production output to storing so it would store it in this tank to selling and therefore it would automatically sell at the top of every hour on top of your energy and methane or you could set it to distributing. Now the thing with distribution and digestate is at this point in time, there isn't anything further down the line to take digestate. I think Giants put that in there. One, it's a continuation of all the other production elements. And two, there's the potential for something further down the road that maybe digestate will be used as an input. There we go. We got some digestate out of that trigger also. So guys, I hope that cleared up any confusion you might have had with respect to biogas plants and farming simulator 22. If you've got any questions, please go ahead and put them down in the comments below. If you know and have done the math as to what is the absolute best thing to be putting into these things, then uh, why not just go ahead and put that down below too. Maybe there is a specific one that has best bang for the buck as far as money spent. Let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.